place and we would be celebrating the, the stone that was rolled away from the tomb and that we would celebrate and shout hallelujah. And so I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but I rolled right out of bed. And I raced all the way over here uh, to church so that I could hear the good news, so that I could tell the story again and so that we could shout and sing hallelujah. Today was one of those days where it was easy for me to roll out of bed. But then there are those days when it's not so easy to roll out of bed, right? There are those days where instead of rolling out of bed, you want to roll over instead and pull the sheets up over your head. Those are the days when it's not shining bright out like it is now. Those are the days when it's dark and gloomy, when maybe you're mad, when maybe you're sad, when maybe you're grieving something. Uh, those are the days when you've probably been tossing and turning all night long, worrying about something, or you have a long list of things to do, and so you don't sleep well, and when that alarm goes off, instead of rolling out of bed, you roll over instead, and you bring the sheets up over your head. That's the kind of day that the women were having our Bible reading for today. We have to remember, this was the first Easter. For us, we hear that the stone is rolled away and we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, but they are grieving, they are in pain, they are depressed, they are all those yucky words that you can think of. Because they had just a couple of days previous witnessed their leader, their friend, their teacher, someone that they thought would be their savior, die this violent, violent death before their very eyes. So on that very, very first Easter Sunday, the women were having one of those crawl into bed, roll over, cover your head kind of days. Now, it was one of those days where they had all the right in the world not to get out of bed, right? If that happened to me, if that happened to you, I'd be still laying in bed with the covers over my head, and I'd say, I don't want to see any of this. I don't want to see what the world is like after Jesus has been crucified. But that's exactly opposite of what the women do in our Bible reading for today. Even though they're grieving, even though they're sad, for some reason they roll out of bed even before the sun rises. They even go shopping before the sun rises. They go and they buy spices to anoint Jesus' body. And then they begin walking towards the tomb, kind of probably almost in a trance, because they don't really even know what's going on. And they begin to walk towards the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. And even though they've rolled out of bed, they quickly realize that they should have just stayed in bed instead. They get the spices, they're walking towards the tomb, and they're thinking about anointing Jesus' body, but before they even get there, they go, Oh, who's going to roll the stone away for us? We forgot about that. Somehow, in their grieving, they forgot about this enormous stone that probably weighed a couple hundred pounds. They forgot, they saw it roll in front, but they forgot that it was there. And so they came to anoint Jesus' body, but how are they going to get into anoint Jesus' body when the stone is lying right there? Whenever I hear this story, I think of a phrase that I use quite often, and you probably use the phrase too, and it's a phrase that became uh, very poignant about 10 years ago. Have you ever used the phrase, let's roll? You probably already know the story, you might have forgotten some of the details, but on September 11th, 2001, it was United Airlines Flight 93. United Airlines Flight 93 was one of the airplanes that was hijacked on September 11th, but it was the plane that didn't crash into the World Trade Center, it crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. And so on that morning, on that flight, everybody on that plane, I'm sure, said to themselves, I wish I never got out of bed this morning. I wish I never got on this plane today. When they discovered that, uh, that they had been hijacked, uh, several of the people talked on their cell phones or on the air phone on their, on their plane, and they talked to people on the ground and they found out what was going on on September 11th, and they quickly realized this wasn't an ordinary hijack. Suddenly their airplane had turned into a weapon, and they would be participating not by choice, but by be participating in the death of maybe hundreds or thousands of others. And so all of the people, or many of the people, many of the passengers said, we're not gonna, we're not gonna let this happen. We're gonna do something about it. And a name that you might remember or look him up today on the internet, you can hear the whole story, learn the whole story. Todd Beamer was his name. 
I think they made a movie about him, actually. Todd Beamer uh, typed in his credit card number, and he talked on the phone, and he, and he got to uh, someone to be able to talk to, to an operator, and he told them exactly what was going on. He said, this is, we've been hijacked. We're not going to let it happen. We're going to we're going to jump these hijackers and we're going to take the plane down if we need to. And uh, the person said, "Do you want to talk to your wife?" And he said, "No, because she was pregnant and he didn't want to. Uh, she was going to be shaken enough up when when she found out everything that was happening." He said, "If we don't make it out, just tell her that I love her." And then, if you've heard the story, if you've seen the story, do you know? Does anybody remember what Todd Beaver did next before he said, "Let's roll"? Anybody remember? prayed the Lord's Prayer. He asked the operator, he said, will you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? And so this person who he's not really met before, they've just started a relationship on the phone, he says, will you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? And up in the sky, knowing that he's likely going to die soon, says our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They pray the entire Lord's Prayer. He then sets the phone down. It's still... She's still able to hear it. The operator is still able to hear it. And the last things that you hear before they go down is he turns to everybody and he says, You guys ready? Okay. Then what does he say? Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. And at that moment, they jump the hijackers. And within minutes, the airplane crashes to the ground and lands in a field in Pennsylvania. It's a horrible story. It's a terrible story. It's a story of death and disaster. But on Easter Sunday, it's a story that is both death and resurrection. It's really the story of what Christ does for us. Todd Beamer and all those that decided that they were going to take the plane back gave up their lives so that other lives wouldn't be lost. All of those lives were lost on that plane, and it is a tragedy. But they died so that less people would have to suffer as well. That's what Jesus does for us to an even greater extent. Jesus dies on the cross so that all of us can have eternal life. Let's roll. When I hear that story, I wonder to myself, how in the world, where in the world did Todd Beamer and all of the other passengers, where did they get the courage that day to say, let's roll, when they're looking death in the eye? When they knew that death was coming, where did they get the courage to say, let's roll? When we uh, hear our Bible reading for today, where do the women get the courage from? On a day that all the other disciples have run and hid, all the disciples that had followed Jesus all the way until he went to the cross, and then they went, But the women said, let's roll. Let's roll out of bed this day. And had they gotten there and the stone was still there, they would say, let's roll this stone out of the way. I wonder where Jesus got the courage to be able to die on the cross for our sins, knowing that we would reject Jesus throughout the centuries, throughout our lives. Where did Jesus get the courage from? Where do you get the courage from? Where do we get the courage from whenever we face disaster in our life? When the things are going wrong, when we do face death, when we do face illnesses, when we do face things that we fear, where do you, where do we get the courage from? The answer is printed on the cover of our book. There are two verses printed on the cover. The one you already heard. The one said, who's going to roll the stone away for us? That's the question that they ask. But then here's one of the other Easter miracles. It says, when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. This stone that they didn't know if they would be able to roll it, the stone had already been rolled back. That's the good news of Easter. The good news of Easter is that we don't ultimately have to roll the stone. As Christians, we don't roll the stone. Instead, we simply put our trust in the one who has already rolled the stone for us. We simply put our trust knowing that God will continue to remove those stones. God's already removed the stone of death. God removes the stone of sin. God removes the stone of our fear and our anxiety. God continues to roll those stones away. Speaking of the rolling stones. Anybody like the rolling stones? All right. 
This is one of the only one person in the whole congregation likes the Rolling Stones. Oh my goodness, alright. Three, three. Okay, four. I'm, this is one of the only reasons that I'm happy that Pastor Nancy isn't here today. I always want her here, but today I want to tell a story about her that she would never tell you herself. She's always really shy about this. Do you know that Pastor Nancy once served communion, Holy Communion, to the Rolling Stones? Our Pastor Nancy served communion to Mick Jagger. <laughs> it's an awesome story, and she never tells it. So I'm going to tell it now, because she's not here, right? <laughs> Let's roll the stone away. So the reason she once served communion to Mick Jagger and the rest of the Rolling Stones is the congregation where she served before she came to Medford was uh, Messiah Lutheran Church in Marquette, Michigan. And one of the members of that church was the road manager for the Rolling Stones for 27 years. Super cool guy. His name was Chooch McGee. Uh, you know you're cool when your name is Chooch, right? <laughs> Super cool guy. Uh, he was a family friend of ours as well. Chooch McGee uh, died tragically at age 54 uh, of a massive heart attack. And so everybody was shocked when, when Chooch passed away. Everybody was shocked. And sometimes we forget that famous people like Mick Jagger would grieve as well. So everyone was shocked, including Mick Jagger himself. And so uh, the day of the funeral, it was taking place at Messiah Mark Kepler Nancy was the pastor. The day of the funeral, some, guess, guess who showed up? The Rolling Stones! The whole crew! They all showed up and somehow the paparazzi didn't find out. They took a private jet into Marquette. Nobody knew where they were there. They walked into the worship space. And by the way, they sat in the front pew. You all can think about doing that sometime. <laughs> I'll use that as an excuse. The Rolling Stones sit in the front pew and so should you, right? They sat in the front pew and in the middle of the worship service they got up and there was guitars already sitting there for them. And just one song, the Rolling Stones got up at Chooch's funeral and they sang Amazing Grace. Can you imagine? They sang Amazing Grace and the amazing thing about it was the church was packed just like we are today and no one applauded. No one took a picture. No one asked for an autograph. Why would that be? Because that day, Mick Jagger was just like everybody else. That day, the Rolling Stones were just like everybody else. They were grieving the loss of a loved one. They were grieving the loss of a friend. And then came the great part. They served Holy Communion. And Mick Jagger walked up to Pastor Nancy, and she said, the body of Christ give it for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now, uh, why do you think Pastor Nancy never wants to share that story? You know me. You know that if it happened to me, I would say, Hi, I'm Pastor Pete. I serve communion to the Rolling Stones. <laughs> you know that I would do that. That would be my intro all the time. But I'm so grateful for all the things I've learned from Pastor Nancy because Pastor Nancy understood that that day was not about the Rolling Stones. That day was not about Mick Jagger. That day was about the stone that was rolled away by God. That day was celebrating that the stone 2,000 years, years ago was rolled away. They looked inside and said, wow, death does not have the last word. And so that day, everyone gathered in that church had the confidence knowing that Chooch was going to experience eternal life. All of us in this room today can have that confidence as well, that because of Christ, death does not have the final word. So the Rolling Stones are a cool band. The Rolling Stones have made some great music, but God, 2,000 years before the Rolling Stones ever even thought about singing songs, rolled the first stone away. And that's what this day is all about. Thanks be to God. Amen. And hallelujah.